Welcome, this is Dan from Nancy and Dan Travel. This is not our typical adult or senior travel video, yet we felt compelled to raise these issues with you when Nancy and I watched, as is our typical early morning routine, a YouTube video from one of our favorite cruising YouTube channels about the financial aspect of purchasing, yes, I said purchasing, a cabin on a particular cruise ship. The video in question tried to compare from a financial perspective owning a retirement home in a modest retirement community to purchasing an actual cabin on a ship that was going around the world for a 15 year period. I won't mention the YouTube channel here or the cruise line because I had never heard of it. Yet, what follows in this video are just some of the concerns I had when we watched their video this morning and wanted to share them with you. So if you were interested in this concept, of owning a specific cabin on a specific cruise ship for a 15 year period from a particular cruise line that you at least have additional questions to ask from a totally unbiased perspective, ours, as we have no affiliation with the particular cruise company that was making this offer. For the record of those who might be new to our channel, we are seniors, we live in a retirement community, we travel a lot, and yes, I do have, in the past before my retirement, a financial background. Now first, here's the concept. The concept here sounds like, although you won't find this term anywhere, at least not in the video we saw or on the company's website, but the concept is, to us, think timeshare at sea. I know, the term timeshare has a lot of really negative connotations for land-based offerings from most companies. Yet, if you compare the concept to land-based timeshares, you'll see there are a lot of similarities. You own your own specific cabin on a specific ship versus owning part of a condo unit in a timeshare building. Your ownership ends after 15 years, as far as we understand. Yes, this is very short versus most land-based timeshares. You can pay full cash or put money down and they will finance the rest for you. Just like most land-based timeshares. You have monthly maintenance fees, just like land-based timeshares. Said to be fixed for the 15 year term, which is unlike most land-based timeshares, which seem to go up each year. You can have a specific number of guests stay in your cabin with you and have guests stay in your cabin without you just like land-based timeshares. You can stay on board for all 15 years without leaving or come and go as you please, with the appropriate notice, of course. Your food, certain drinks with dinner, perhaps some shore excursions, that part wasn't totally clear, utilities, cabin cleaning, onboard activities, and, which could be really great, your laundry are all included in the monthly maintenance fees. The complimentary cleaning service of your cabin twice a week with laundry as part of your weekly housekeeping, as far as we understand it. Now, with that background, here are the areas of questions that were not resolved for us and which we believe you would need to take into account when you do your own research, should you be interested in this cruising and investment concept. Financial and medical. And the two are many ways intertwined. Since we don't pretend to have the answers, this will be a relatively short video as we will list and explain our questions. It's up to you to do your due diligence and get the answers to these questions to your satisfaction. Let's start with financial. First, what's the financial stability of the cruise company over for 15 years? Are you familiar with them? What are their financials? What's their balance sheet like? What happens if the cruise ship owners go bankrupt during those 15 years? What happens to your investment, to your cabin? What happens to all the agreements you would sign if the ship is sold? What happens after 15 years to your investment? Do you get nothing? Are you left with nothing? What is the resale market if you want or need to sell your cabin before the 15 years is over? The cruise company from our research does have a reduced sliding scale whereby they may offer to buy your cabin back from you, setting a floor price, if you will. In any financial analysis, don't forget the cost you would spend when at any ports to your financial analysis. 
Tour excursions, non-tour excursion costs for food and drink when on shore. Cost of health insurance, medical, dental, vision, prescriptions, and so on. Will the medical services on board take your Medicare A or any Medicare Advantage plans that you have? What about the cost of medical insurance that anyone should take before going on any cruise for emergencies? What if you need to be evacuated by helicopter off of the ship to the closest port that has a hospital for your particular medical emergencies? Who's going to pay for that? How can the monthly fees never change over the 15 years? If you want to go on a really, really long cruise, compare the cost and services and amenities, including return airfare of such long cruises to the annual maintenance fees that you'll have to pay for this particular cruise offer. And then there's the medical concerns. Our area of concerns here surrounds both routine and emergency services, their quality, consistency, availability, versus if you were at a land-based timeshare or simply in your home at your land-based retirement or non-retirement community. Prescription refills. How does that work for your current prescriptions when you board for the first time? What about the quality control of the prescriptions? New prescriptions. How does that work? Will the onboard medical staff be authorized anywhere in the world to create these new prescriptions for you? Dental cleaning. What's available on board? Annual dental checkup. Is that available on board? Dental cavities, root canals, and so on. What about emergency dental services? Is that available on board? Medical annual checkups. Again, is it available on board? Routine medical procedures. Are those available on board? What about emergency medical services and procedures? Are they available on board? Do they have all the medical equipment, for example, x-ray machines to use should you have an emergency while you're out in the open seas? Again, we do not have the answers. You would need to do research to your satisfaction. Our objective here with this video is simply to offer you an unbiased perspective on some of the questions you should ask and receive answers to before you invest any of your hard-earned money on what to us is basically a timeshare at sea. We'd really like to hear from you on this topic. What other questions would you have with this concept? What would entice you to invest $100,000 of your money or more, plus $5,000 a month maintenance fees for a 15 year timeshare at sea? Let us know in the comments below. We're very interested in this topic. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.